Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're making swirling soft bodies in Cinema 4D. Right, before we get started, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who's supported the channel so far. We made it to 10,000 subscribers last week, which is really amazing and very encouraging, so cheers. So to celebrate, this week's tutorial is going to be one you guys have requested. And I do promise to do more of these, just send me a link to an effect you'd like to create in the comment section or on our Facebook group and I'll see what I can do. So this one comes from Alistair Smith on our Facebook group who wanted to know how to create something like this effect from the recent Apple launch. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and see if we can do it. Right, we'll start with one of our old friends, the Sphere. Let's bring one of those in. Then we'll swing up here to the display options and turn our lines on. Ideally we want our sphere to have nice even geometry because we're going to be using dynamics and not these tiny poles at the top and bottom. So let's come down here and change the type from standard to icosahedron. And now we have triangles but they're nice and even and that's going to make our dynamic simulations work a lot better. So this is a pretty big sphere at the moment, it's 100 centimeters wide so let's bring that down to 20 centimeters. And we'll zoom in here. We want to make a whole bunch of these so let's bring in a cloner. With our sphere selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and down here is the cloner. If we hold the Alt key when we click it, it'll automatically apply itself to our sphere. And now we've got a couple of clones in the Y direction. But we actually want more of a cluster of these spheres. So let's go check out our cloner effector. Down here under the Object tab, you can see the mode is set to Linear. Let's change that. We're going to use Object. And the object we're going to slot into here is another sphere. So we'll grab our old sphere, hold control and drag it down here to make a duplicate. And we want this guy to be a bigger sphere. So we'll come down here and change it from 20 centimeters to 50 centimeters. Then back up to our cloner. We'll grab our new sphere and drag it down here into the object slot. And now it's covered in spheres, which is not exactly the effect we want, but we can change that easy enough. We'll just come down here and change the distribution from vertex to volume. And that'll try to fill the bigger sphere with the tiny spheres. Okay, before we go too far, we should probably rename this. Let's just call it outside sphere. There's gonna be a whole lot of spheres here, so we don't wanna to get too confused. Now, we don't need to see that guy, so let's double click here to turn off its visibility. And the next step is to give these spheres a bit of variation. We don't want them all the same size. So we'll come back up here and grab our cloner, then over under the MoGraph menu and effectors, we'll bring in a random effector. That should automatically apply if you had the cloner selected. It's pushing them all over the place now, which we don't want. So under the parameter tab, we'll turn off position and we'll switch on scale. We want a uniform scale. And let's just put in 0.5 here. And now we've got a range between full size spheres and half size. But I think we might have a few too many spheres in here. Let's come back up to our cloner and down here under the count, Let's bring that from 50 down to 10. And that's looking a bit more manageable. I kind of want them to cluster in a bit more of a spherical shape. So if we come down here, we can play with the seed value until we get something we like. I think that should work for us. Don't worry too much if your spheres are overlapping, we'll be fixing that soon. But first I think it's time we started applying some dynamics. So with our cloner selected, we'll come up to tags and down to simulation tags and we'll grab a soft body dynamics tag. And if we hit play, we'll get all kinds of issues. And the playback speed is really slow and it's going a bit crazy as well. Let's just stop that and we'll rewind that. The first thing we want to do is to tell our dynamics to treat all of these spheres as individual spheres and not one big giant bunch of spheres. So under the collision tab, where it says individual elements, let's change that to top level. And while we're here, under shape, we'll change it from automatic to static mesh. So now we'll have individual spheres and the shape will be the exact shape of the spheres. And that's all well and good, but you can see we're still having issues. Let's stop that. Firstly, to speed things up, if we go back to our sphere, let's bring the segments down so it's got less to calculate. Let's try 12. And you can see all these guys are nice and low res now. Let's hit play. Much faster. Now the next issue is we don't want these guys dropping, so we don't want gravity to affect it. We just want to keep them all centralized here. So if we hit Control D on the keyboard and bring up our project settings and over here under the dynamics tab, under general, 
We've got our gravity down here. And all we need to do is put that to zero to keep these in place. And if we have a look at this, they're floating away a little bit there because they're intersecting, but we're about to fix that. Usually if objects are intersecting at the beginning of the simulation, they tend to explode. So to fix this, we're gonna make sure at the start of the simulation, they're nice and small, and then they can grow as big as they want and interact with each other. So if we grab our sphere, and down here you can see the radius is set to 20 centimeters. Let's go ahead to frame 10 and we'll set a keyframe there. And we'll go back to the first frame and we'll set another keyframe with our spheres much smaller. Let's say five centimeters. And we'll just have a quick check to make sure they're small enough so they're not touching each other. Looks pretty good to me. We'll set that keyframe and we'll give it a play. Now, rather than going crazy, they grow, they bounce off each other and float out into space. We're getting closer. So now we want them to behave like they're inside an invisible shape. In our example, that would be the Apple logo, but in our case, we're gonna use another sphere. But you can use whatever shape you like, just think of it as a big container. Let's grab our last sphere and control drag it to make a duplicate, and we'll rename that container. Let's make it visible by clicking this. And now we want our container to be just big enough to contain all our spheres. And you can see those guys are poking out there. So let's make this slightly bigger, maybe 55 centimeters. And we'll just double check, nothing poking through, looks good. We want our dynamic spheres to interact with this guy. So we'll grab it, then under tags again, we'll come down to simulation tags, and this time we'll grab a collider body. And we wanna make this guy a static mesh as well, so it retains that exact spherical shape for our other spheres to interact with. Now we can do our little hiding trick again. So we only see our soft body spheres, so now in theory, they should expand and get squished up inside our new spherical container. Let's give it a try. Success. Now that's a pretty cool effect in itself. You could probably have a bit of fun with that technique, but we're gonna crack on and make this rotate like it does in the example. Let's go back to the start. Then up here under the simulate menu, we'll come down to particles and we'll grab a rotation. If we hit play, you'll notice no effect. We have to tell our dynamics to use this rotation. So if we click on that tag, then over under the force tab, we're currently set to exclude forces. So let's change that to include. Then we'll grab our rotation and drag it into the force list and give that a play. Still not seeing too much. I think we need to crank up the settings. We'll grab that rotation and we'll come down here and change the speed. Let's try something like 400 and give that a go. And now we've got some rotation. That's kind of cool. Okay, let's pause that for a second. To see this in all its glory, we'll go up to display and turn those lines off. Then under filter, let's hide the grid. Our spheres are looking a little bit chunky, so let's smooth that out. We'll grab our cloner and we'll add a subdivision surface. Remember to hold Alt so it's automatically applied. That usually makes a little glitch, but then everything looks nice and smooth. So let's take another look at that. Cool, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty much the gist of this effect, but there's a few more things you can do to jazz it up a little bit. You will notice some weird glitches, but when we bake this out for final render, you should be able to get rid of that. Okay, let's start by making the timeline a bit longer. 200 frames should do it. Now I think we could probably add a bit more variation to the animation here. So what if we bring in a turbulence? It's easy to do, pretty much the same way as before. Up here in the simulate menu, particles again, we'll grab a turbulence. Back over here in our tag, we have to make sure that's applied. Remember down here? So drag him right in there. And just so we can see what's happening here, we'll turn off the rotation. And now if we hit play, you can see just the turbulence affecting our spheres. It's kind of cool. It could probably do with a bit more power. So let's grab it and down here under the strength, we'll bring that up to 100 centimeters. And play that back. And that's cool, they're bouncing around a little bit there. So we'll stop that, go back to the start. We'll turn on the rotation and we'll see them both working together. That's a little bit more interesting. Maybe that rotation's a little bit fast. Let's stop that. And we'll go and grab that guy and we'll bring that speed down to something like 300 and give that a whirl. Yep, I'm liking that. 
Now, one more thing you could do is play around with the soft body settings. If we grab that tag again, over under soft body, we can bring the structural down here to 10, so they're a bit more squishy. And we'll play that back. It's subtle, but I think it makes it look a little bit more interesting. So just play around with this until you get something you like. One more thing while we're here, if you rewind and you don't want that initial growing, you can actually set the starting position of our soft body objects. So for example, if we like this frame, we can come over here to the dynamics tab and there's set initial state. But before we hit that, we'll go back to our sphere and get rid of this animation. Let's right click, animation, delete track. Now back over here, hit that button. And if we rewind and wait just a second for it to think, it'll snap to that initial state. And if we hit play, it'll go right from there. Okay, when you're happy with your animation, it's probably a good idea to bake this before you try to render. So let's stop that, hit rewind. We'll go over to the cache tab here and we'll hit bake all. That'll bake all the frames. And now you're ready to render your next masterpiece. Although you might want to slow that rotation down just a tad. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys create with this technique. Please do post it up on social media. And as usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And you can find a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. <laughs> And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.